live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE. Covering IFS World Conference 2018. Brought to you by IFS. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of IFS World Conference 2018 here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We have a three panel guest with us today. We have Eric Schaefer, the Senior Managing Director of Accenture. Paul Marr, GM Industry Experiences at Microsoft, and Yasushi Yagyu, uh, Assistant Manager at NEC Corporation. Thank you so much for joining me. You're Thank very you. welcome. Thank you. So you're on this panel because you are all platinum sponsors and close partners of IFS. We, we've heard a lot today about uh, IFS's passion for customers. It's, it's a, it's a customer-centric, customer-focused company. I'd love to hear from you, your experiences as, as, as being partners with IFS, if you could describe a little bit about what you've experienced. Can well, I start thanks. with you? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. No, I think uh, it's, we've been, Accenture and IFS have been partners for many, many years. And what I've appreciated with the, uh, in the relationship is the customer focus, but really the focus on delivering value to both IFS and Accenture customers. It's a value-driven approach. Uh, very industry specific, so understanding the industry issues, leveraging IFS products and solution to best meet these, having Accenture come in and help tailor the solution to the industry, uh, the industry imperatives, and, and also di leveraging digital technologies and combining these with the IFS foundation, which I think was a key term used uh, this morning. Yeah, I mean, so um, Microsoft and IFS have had uh, a very long and, and uh, prosperous uh, partnership over the last 20 years or so. Um, but I, you know, what, what's great to hear from the keynote this morning is obviously the announcement of IFS Applications 10. And so Microsoft obviously being a, a cloud provider, we've most recently been working very closely with IFS on, on their move to the cloud and moving their solutions to the cloud. So you know, this thing called digital transformation is really sort of the boss and it's great to see, you know, as, as you had probably this morning in, in uh, the keynote, you know, really disruption is really driving new innovation and so we're really glad to partner with IFS in response to that disruption, thinking about cloud and bringing the IFS solutions to the cloud and really delivering innovation to, to really address the digital transformation needs of industry. And I'd love to talk with you, Yasushi, about innovation. I'm going to ask all of you, but mm -hmm. this is a company that really is known for having a history of innovation. How do you come together and, and, and collaborate and come up with new creative solutions? Uh -huh. uh, for example, we have uh, independently developed AI engine uh, named uh, HML is our uh, engine. And our customer has already implemented that kind of uh, AI solution. Uh, to predict their uh, demand forecast. And then um, we, our solution is connected to the IFS uh, production control, control module or uh, master schedule uh, module. And then uh, now uh, our AI can generate uh, forecast data and send, send it to the uh, master schedule module. I know that Accenture has innovation centers around the world. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how you how you innovate with, with IFS? Well, um, so we have four center, four innovation centers across the world. We have one in Detroit, one in Munich, Shanghai, and, and Tokyo. And what we do with uh, with IFS is look at industry use cases, and then by combining IFS solutions plus some of the digital assets, which are uh, proprietary to Accenture combining the two to deliver new levels of efficiency. And so helping our clients walking through these innovation centers, they get the, they get the wow moment where they see how IFS plus Accenture combined can deliver more value and unlock the value which is trapped in their enterprise. Can you talk a little bit about that wow, that wow factor? I mean, what, what are sort of, what are the, a lot of the challenges that your clients are facing that, you, that your partnership with IFS has helped them solve? Well, Many of our clients, and I think the term digital transformation of industry was mentioned, it, it is how is digital transforming the industry? I think the question is not the why. Everybody's convinced and has understood that it is happening. The, the question is more the how to. And, and this is where the combination of IFS plus Accenture, really focusing on the how to, how to leverage these technologies on very pragmatic use cases, demand forecasting we heard. It's all about artificial intelligence and visual and computer vision for visual quality inspections. 
analytics on the shop floor. So it, it's working with IFS and our clients, the team of three, to identify these use cases and see how to leverage digital to respond and provide a solution. At Microsoft, what kind of benefits have you seen with, with some of the IFS products? Yeah, I mean, so you know, from, a, from a Microsoft perspective, of course, you know, we are the, the, you know, the vendor, the technology vendor, and let's say most recently we've been working very closely with IFS around the move to the cloud. So, I mean, certainly as I think about the partnership that, that we've had, I mean, it really is multifaceted in, in terms of, of course, we, we work very closely around how do we think about driving new opportunities and sales motions, and IFS is, is one of our you know, uh, highest ranked managed partners, so we partner very closely there. But you know, certainly if I was to focus on the technology innovation perspective, what we're really excited about is really that digital disruption and using you know, the, the new uh, IFS applications, in particular um, you know, uh, IFS Applications 10 that's been announced at the conference, working in partnership there to really look to see how do we, how do we start to move the needle and move new customers to, to really achieve to their digital transformation needs and demands uh, in partnership with the IFS solution running on the Microsoft Azure Cloud. What are some of the most exciting new features in uh, in IFS 10 that you're most excited about? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, you mentioned before about sort of the buzzwords. I mean, but uh, and, and, and the on-trend technologies. And again, I'll sort of quote the keynote this morning. But what really excites me, and I think excites our, our joint customers, IFS and Microsoft, is things like artificial intelligence. So what that can do around things like you know machine learning, uh, cognitive services. Uh, things like IoT and making that a reality, so thinking about things like predictive maintenance and really being able to integrate um, the IFS solutions on the Microsoft Azure platform, leveraging IoT to really help in those sort of sorts of scenarios is great. And then, you know, really super excited about some of the, the, the new innovation opportunities. So thinking about things like blockchain and what that can do, uh, as you think about, you know, sort of the, the broader opportunity around su supply chain and payments and so on. Um, so I think that that closer together of, of the platform. But also, I mean, we, you know, we've had such a close partnership with IFS. So thinking about really sort of a business problem led first approach followed by how can the technology innovation help our joint customers, I think is really helping us as we're looking to innovate in the world of digital transformation. And I know that uh, NEC has recently come out with an announcement about AI and heterogeneous mixed learning mm -hmm. technology. Can you tell our, our viewers a little bit more about that, Yasushi? Yes, uh, we have an AI engine, uh, HML, uh, and our customer has uh, implemented that kind of AI solution uh, to demand forecast or uh, machine failure prediction or quality analysis uh, operations. And some of our AI solutions uh, do collaborate with IFS applications. Uh, for, exa for example, uh, at NEC Booth, we can demonstrate uh, our demand forecast solution. And demand information of each product uh, comes from IFS, uh, master schedule or uh, uh, inventory transaction. Uh, as input data into AI engine. And then the AI generates focus, focus data uh, automatically and send it back to the, that module, yeah. So here, IFS, we, we've, we've heard a lot today uh, too about the metrics, that how it measures its success, and we've heard that it has very high NPS score, it's Gartner Insights score far out above competitors and yet it is kind of this best kept secret in the industry. What would your advice be to IFS uh, in terms of getting the word out about its products? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think everyone's uh, looking for opportunities to further their market share and uh, drive net new innovation and, and uh, sales pipeline. I think the, I mean, the, the best guidance I would uh, give is that IFS you know, really is a first class uh, company and has first class products. So I think it's continued to, to innovate and be true to, to, to the core um, and you know, just work with partners like our good friends here to really get the, the word out. But I mean, it, it's really not about doing unnatural acts. I think it's really about building an empathy and understanding of what's needed in the industry. And I think the storytelling and the brand awareness will, will grow. Um, and you know, I think 
from what I was hearing this morning, I mean, the conference even this year has already grown by 20%. So I think, you know, sort of, you'll see, see those sort of leading indicators of the, the word getting out and the, the brand profile out there. So I think it's, the, it's, it's, be, it's a cautious approach, it's a strategic approach by using partners and not doing unnatural things. Let the, the innovation that's happening at IFS and with those partnerships almost do the storytelling and, and, and the brand awareness um, and just, just be true to, to the, the competency and listen to the customers. When, when you think ahead at what we're going to be thinking about and talking about at WOCO 2019, 2020, yep. Yep. Um, what are sort of the, the big trends that you see? I mean, we, we've, we've hit a lot of the buzzwords with uh, AI and machine learning. What else do you see on the horizon? What, are, what is sort of keeping you up at night or are you thinking about? Well, uh, what I do see is that, so we mentioned all these digital technologies, <clears throat> they will force manufacturers, I believe, to completely reinvent their products and services. And so the products of tomorrow will be with a lot of AI, a lot of digital technologies inside the products, also outside of the products. So products will be very different from today. And so you can easily imagine that the way you engineer, the way you manufacture, the way you support these products will also be completely different. So I, I think next year, 2019, will be all of, about how digital is reinventing the products and services of the manufacturers. Right, we, we, we keep thinking about how it's reinventing our workforce and, and changing the way we're doing things, but it's actually going to be reinventing what's coming out that. too, mm -hmm. these processes. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you've touched upon some of the buzzwords. Um, I mean, I think it's also the maturity of the technologies. So, I mean, I think that's certainly what excites me is the um, the maturity and the capabilities are growing. So, you know, things like machine learning isn't necessarily new, but with breakthroughs around the algorithms, that's kind of bringing sort of the pragmatic reality of it being able to drive the innovation needed. Um, you know, capabilities such as the cloud is providing that ability to scale up, scale down, the ability to provide processing power that wasn't there previously possible in a price performant way. So I think, you know, it's great to sort of focus on some of the, the, the shiny things that are coming up, but I think it's also important to look at saying the things that, you know, are sort of, of, of yesterday that aren't, isn't that far off, it's, it's the maturity that they're reaching. And so it's really making sure that they are taken advantage of and, and really taking that pragmatic approach of, it's got to be, again, sort of business-led versus technology-led, bringing that innovation into, into industry. Uh, yeah, Sushi, do you see any, any, any big trends on the horizon that, you, that you're thinking about at NEC? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A big, big technology trends, things that, things that you're thinking about, maybe you're worried about, concerned about. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I think IoT technologies have been um, reached to early majority stage already, and recently many users successfully uh, gather, uh, correct various kind of data through uh, and revalidate the data to improve uh, actual business operations. And then, as a next step, I believe AI technolo te technologies uh, will be widely applied for demand forecasting or uh, that kind of uh, failure prediction. And th that case of success in each industry will become solution models or uh, templates, and then which will accelerate the uh, progress of AI introduction. Great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Ashushi, Eric, Paul, I really appreciate your time. It's been a great conversation. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We will have more from IFS WOCO 2018 just after this.